I swapped a diesel engine into my 4x4, but now my dashboard doesn't work and I'm driving blind. I need to create a system which will give me all the information I need in order to actually drive the car, but also to troubleshoot issues. There are aftermarket systems that will address this, like for example, Holly's EFI Live, but they're really expensive. They also aren't as customizable as I would like them to be. And this is build something. I like to overcomplicate things. I like to build things myself rather than spending money on them. Therefore, I'm gonna design my own electronic data logging system and my own electronic dashboard. This is a pretty bold goal, but stick with me. I'm hoping I can do it in a way that provides enough information that you could do it too if you wanted. The first problem is that while I'm driving, I have no idea how fast I'm going, what the engine RPM is, or any of that other critical driver information. In my previous video when I was driving this thing, every time I would drive it uphill, it would stall. Also, it's dying again. In that video, I said the issue was probably just the fuel pickup in the tank. However, I really shouldn't jump to conclusions. Troubleshooting by just replacing parts and hoping that it fixes the issue is a very inefficient and very expensive way to troubleshoot. The right way to troubleshoot is to actually run diagnostic tests and see what's going on. I need to check the fuel pressure in the lift pump circuit. If that pressure's fine, there's no reason for me to drop the tank. The problem is though, I need to check it while I'm driving because it's while I'm driving that the issue happens. I could just buy a gauge pod and hook up a mechanical gauge. When you do that, you need to buy a separate gauge for every single thing that you wanna measure, and that gets pretty expensive pretty quick. There's a lot of things I wanna measure here, and I would like a system that can do it all at once. In order to make this work, I'm gonna do the unthinkable. I'm gonna add a computer to this mechanical 12 valve Cummins. You know, the engine that everybody buys because it doesn't have a computer. I'm gonna add one to it. Instead of using an expensive proprietary aftermark electronic data logging and dashboard system, I'm gonna build my own starting from scratch. I'm gonna build it using open source components and it's gonna be cheap most importantly cheap. So let's talk about what the brains of the system are gonna be. When people refer to their car's computer, this is typically what they mean. This little thing takes a bunch of input from a bunch of sensors and displays it in your dashboard. That's the part we wanna replicate. I'm gonna call this part data logging and display. But the second function of this computer is the part we don't wanna emulate and that's computerized control. This computer will also use sensor inputs to fire spark plugs, fuel injectors, etc. My engine is mechanical and I don't need this, so I won't be making it. This video is about reading data and displaying it. It's not about engine control. However, if that's something you're interested in, leave a comment. I do have some other projects in mind that may require a full engine control unit, so just let me know. This stock computer, like a Holly, is proprietary, and therefore I can't program it to do anything that I want it to do. I wanted to work with a 12 valve Cummins, and I can't believe Ford didn't think about that when they were making that computer in the factory. I need something that I can program myself, and that's where this little guy comes in. This is an Arduino. Technically, an Arduino is an open source PLC or programmable logic controller. A PLC is like a full-blown computer, but it doesn't do as many things as a computer does. What it is best at is taking input from sensors, interpreting that input based on how you want to program it, and then outputting digital signals. This is exactly what I need to run the dash. When I'm building this system, my first focus is on building a robust system. This means that I need to do everything I can to make sure that this thing will survive the temperature, vibration, and voltage requirements demanded by an automotive system. I'm starting off with this cheap $20 enclosure I found on Amazon. This will keep the electronics waterproof so that hopefully I can still spray the interior out with a hose after a weekend off-roading and not have to worry about ruining the electronics. I did put all that effort into bed lining the interior for a reason. As a side note, the six x six enclosure turned out to be a little too small. I'm actually ordering a bigger enclosure and I'll replace this one. Next, a normal Arduino isn't very resistant to temperature or voltage swings. I picked up this rugged Arduino, which has a much wider temperature rating and can run directly off the automotive alternator and battery with its varying voltage levels. The other nice thing is that this one came with screw terminals, which is much more vibration resistant. In order to get the wires out of the box, I am using these cheap cable glands, which will keep the enclosure's penetrations waterproof. Finally, to connect the wires to the car, I am using Deutsch style connectors. This is my first time using these and they're awesome. I can't believe I've never used them before. I would highly recommend them. If you're interested in any of these items, I bought them all on Amazon. I'll put links in the description. If you choose to use these links, it helps support the channel. So how am I gonna display the information that comes out of this thing? First, I stubbornly wanna keep most of my stock dashboard intact. This means that I want to generate a signal that can actually run the stock dashboard for many of the stock functions like RPM and oil pressure and coolant temperature. Then for the more detailed information like boost, fuel pressure, exhaust temperatures, etc., I purchased this cute little touchscreen. In industry, this is called an HMI or human machine interface. 
It's what connects the person to the robot. This little Nexteon display is much cheaper than an industrial HMI, and it's much easier to program. I could just display all of the information on this screen, but I stubbornly want to make it more complicated by reusing stock aspects of the dash. This video will be focusing on installing the Arduino and gathering basic information, and then my next video on the topic will focus on installing the actual screen and displaying more advanced information. Running the stock tachometer was much more involved than I thought it would be. I am not an electrical engineer, and electronics are still black magic to me. I'd call my approach the uh, brute force and ignorance approach. I guessed at how stuff was supposed to work, tried it out, and if it worked, then great, and otherwise I would just bang my head against Google and retrying different things until I made it work. From the tachometer, I guess that inputting a simple square wave to the tach would run it with more pulses, meaning more RPM. I knew this would be a 12 volt signal and the Arduino can only output five volt. Therefore, I needed a switch where the five volt from the Arduino would flick the switch that then closed a 12 volt circuit. To test this, I start out by wiring up a mechanical switch, also known as a relay. This proof of concept proved the concept. It worked. However, the uh, clicking would get a little annoying, and the relay would probably fail within a few minutes. They really aren't meant to run at a frequency like this. To fix these issues, I needed an electronic switch rather than a mechanical switch. An electronic switch is also known as a transistor. This is one of the most simple solid state electronic components that you can buy, yet it still took me days to figure this out. I even had to download an electronic simulation software in order to keep doing my brute force and ignorance method where I would just plug in different resistor values until I found one that wouldn't overheat. LT Spice is amazing by the way. This is what I use to simulate the circuit and it makes it easy if all you want to do is guess and check. I would highly recommend this free software. Here's the wiring diagram for how I ultimately wired the tachometer. All this does is uses the 5 volt Arduino circuit through the transistor to ground and open the ground on the 12 volt circuit. It's just a switch on the 12 volt ground wire that opens and closes the circuit. The next issue I ran into was I was using this Arduino tone library in order to generate the frequency I needed to run the tachometer. And anytime I ran it at low frequencies, anything under about 500 RPM, it would generate garbage, weird outputs. I figured out that the reason why is because the tone library has a lower limit of 31 hertz. Under that, and you run into weird issues with the clock on the Arduino, and it just doesn't work as expected. This wasn't too big of an issue because the Cummins idles at 800 RPM, so I just set a lower bound of 500 RPM and an upper bound of 6,000 RPM. The Cummins will never run beyond these bounds anyways, so that makes it work just fine. Tachometer now works, which is a huge success. I can ask the Arduino for a certain RPM and it will display it. As a side note, in order for me to figure this stuff out, I'm generating a lot of random information like wiring diagrams and Arduino code. I figure an efficient way to give you guys this information would just be to let you download it yourself rather than walking through every line of code. The way I'm gonna do this is I'm actually starting a website called buildautomedia.com. I now have this cute little Arduino based data logger, but it needs data to log it's time to get some sensors installed. The first sensor is the engine speed sensor, or ESS. I come from the world of gas vehicles where we call these a CPS, or crank position sensor, but I guess on diesels, it's an ESS. It's basically just a Hall effect sensor. It's a magnet that's pointed at the harmonic balancer, and then whenever a gap in the harmonic balancer passes the sensor, it closes a circuit and sends a voltage pulse to the PCM. In my case, it's actually a digital Hall effect sensor, which was a little bit of a problem. It has some circuitry inside so that the pulse is digital. It's just on off. It's not analog. It's not anywhere in between on and off. And the issue is that this just means that it was outputting a 0.8 volt signal. It turns out my Arduino can't read this signal. Because I don't really know what I'm doing, it took me days to figure out why it couldn't read it. I thought maybe I had wired it wrong or maybe my code was wrong. Well, it turns out this Arduino Mega needs like three volts in order to trigger. It will not trigger off of 0.8 volts, so I need to either make an amplifier circuit or buy a ready-made one off Amazon or something in order to amplify the signal to get it to trigger. Other than that, this is working. That stuff's in the mail, so let's move on to fuel pressure. A fuel pressure reading while driving is what I need to troubleshoot my stalling issue, so this is my next priority. This is the pressure sender, it's around 20 bucks on Amazon, but I need to be able to plug this into the fuel system and there isn't an eighth inch NPT fitting on the fuel system itself. That's what this adapter's for. It has eight. 
that's what this adapter is for. It has 8th inch NPT on the one side and the other side is the banjo fitting that I need to plug into the fuel system. In between the two of these, I'm also gonna put what's called a snubber valve. This is basically just a tiny little orifice that makes the pressure reading more constant than having that giant orifice that it's reading the pressure from. It also limits the pressure that can go to the sensor. If there's a huge pressure spike, like a hydraulic hammer effect or something when a valve closes, this will help protect the sensor. This is what that stack up is gonna look like. Let's go put it on the car. I calibrated the pressure sensor by giving it five volts, pressurizing it with an air hose, and then writing down how much voltage it read. I was able to get the wiring for the engine speed sensor run, as well as the signal wire to the dash so that now the dash can run. And I was able to get the pressure gauge installed. There's a bunch more wiring that needs done. And of course I still need to install the display, but that's gonna be the next video. If you liked this video, consider checking out the video where I was having these stalling issues in the first place. And I hope to see you next time. Get out there and build something.